Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so excited today to be talking all about the Netflix series, Never Have I Ever. We are joined today by cast members Maitre Ramakrishnan, Darren Barnett, Jaron Lewison, Lee Rodriguez, Ramona Young, Richard Morjani, Porna Jagannathan, and Megan Suri. And Maitre, I wanted to start with a question for you in terms of, of how you've approached the emotional landscape of this character, because there was that that beautiful scene with you and Nisi Nash in, in therapy last season where there yeah. was that exploration of how Davey's someone who just feels everything so incredibly strongly and you really play to that beautifully. But what you do so wonderfully as well is you also show this character going through a lot of growth. So moments like her thinking that she sees her dad in the audience, she still yeah. responds to incredibly deeply, but also works through in a way that she probably wouldn't have been able to in season one. And so I was interested in in kind of three seasons into playing her, how you still kind of explore those very re rich and deep emotions, but find those elements of growth for her. Yeah, I will say um, a big credit goes to the writing for sure. And I take many a long walks with Lang and Mindy when they're on set. Um, they all coach me through the scene, just like talking to me and making sure I understand. Um, but I will also definitely have to give credit to my scene partners. I mean, Nisi Nash, big shout out to her. I love the days she's on set because she's just so giving as an actress. I remember that day when felt like <clears throat> filming that scene where I'm talking about feeling too crazy and just feeling like, you know, I'm too much. Um, Nisi was like, hey, let her do whatever she wants. If she wants to have her coverage first, let her have that. I am here for her. This is her moment. And that made me feel like I was in a space where I was able to truly just hone in on what Davy was going through in that moment. In general, though, when it comes to figuring out her arc and when she has those moments when she's remembering her dad, just when she thinks she's getting better, it's remembering that this girl is going through a lot, that this is a core of who she is, and that growth comes with a couple of steps back sometimes, even though you're taking steps forward. So yeah, it comes from very honest places, finding empathy with Davy, uh, where I can feel and connect and relate to those feelings. But it's a mix of a bunch of different things. I couldn't put all that credit on me. Definitely, it's a group effort to tackle those scenes that might seem very individual. I love that description of, of moving forwards and backwards at the same time. And, yeah. and Darren, that brings me over to you with Paxton, because that's also an exploration that it feels like he was really on this season. You've brought so much more to the surface season by season. And this season in particular, him exploring his own sense of feeling like he doesn't even know who he is and having to unravel a little bit in order to build himself back together. Um, and so how did you kind of find what are the spaces where he's going to kind of have to unbuild himself a little bit in order to create that foundation to work towards towards the finale when he's kind of built himself back together a bit. Yeah. I mean, I think since he broke his arm um, season two, it's been somewhat of an identity crisis because he's been this jock that had his whole future planned out and he thought he knew exactly who he was. Um, and it's daunting sometimes to be forced to dig deeper because sometimes you're like, I wonder what's there if anything is there. Um, and I think with the help of especially Davey, you know, like, pushing him to go beyond what his original expectations were of himself. He finds a lot more. Um, so, and also just the sense of being vulnerable. What I like about it is that I feel like a, a lot of people in that position um, or when someone is so strong in a certain identity, they've already labeled themselves with um, there's a sense of vulnerability it takes to break down and rebuild and find other things about yourself. So uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's a wild journey and I can't wait for everyone to see it. That's great. And and Jaron, in talking about Ben a little bit, you know, you've always captured so well the internal pressure that he constantly mounts on himself. And there's such a great turning point for him this season where his dad says that he's proud of him. And those are that's part of what's been pushing him internally for this entire show. Um, and so how did you really work on what does it look like in this space now where he's trying to loosen himself up? He's trying to give himself a lot more space and forgiveness, but yet he's still the Ben that we've known for a couple of seasons. So there are still going to be things that he's struggling to fully loosen up on. I think that it's a, a mixture of things. I think that like at Ben's core, he is still like someone who likes to name drop and who likes to like have witty banter and things like that. And sometimes it can come off a little bit crude, but I think that those vulnerable moments are really important for him and his identity, especially going forward as a young man and then entering college. Like you, you really root for those moments. And I think that like, especially in doing that scene with Michael Bataluco, who, who plays Ben's dad, like 
he was just brilliant in that scene and gave me so much to work with where like it really just inspired me to to like give it everything that I could to be able to like showcase those moments for Ben. And I'm just like really proud of him for going on that journey. And I think that that starts a lot of things for him. I think that Ben and, and his art and like trying to find freedom within that is really special. And I think that like for Ben going forward, he needs to try to hold on to some of those moments and like realize that it's okay to be vulnerable. And like, that's what people really appreciate sometimes is not like these name dropping moments about his dad's clients, but in fact, those moments where he really does care and is really kind. And I, I really appreciate that I had the opportunity to showcase that. Yeah. And Lee with Fabiola, through the fact that you're getting this opportunity now to explore romantic spaces with her, what's really lovely to watch in that journey is her really discovering so much more of herself in those spaces and what it is that she wants in the world. Um, and so how has that really expanded a lot of the emotional spaces that you feel like you've been able to take this character and a lot of her self-confidence? I mean, I see myself in Fabiola in many different ways as far as just being an awkward teen. I definitely was that in high school. I still am very awkward, but <laughs> in, in a charming way, I'd like to think maybe. Yes. Uh, but I feel like with Fabiola's journey, I mean, she's ever evolving and season one, season two, just kind of figuring out her identity um, and it being okay to be queer, but also to love robotics and, you know, not always try to fit into a specific mold. And I feel like season three, she's more, she's more like solid within who she is, but she also has all these different experiences as far as exploring relationships. And um, yeah, so I, I love where Fabiola goes this season. Yeah. And similarly, Ram Ram um, Ramona, you've also had that opportunity to kind of look at a romantic relationship and the dynamic that that really brings out for your character in, in new and different ways, especially in the way that they kind of unexpectedly challenge each other and, and really kind of push each other to thrive. And so how did that open up a lot of space in the character for you? And even just through the fact that it also brings new friendships and relationship dynamics, like the friendship that she then has with Paxton. Yeah, I think um, for the first time, Eleanor is feeling things that she's never felt before on a series. She's never been in such a serious, deep relationship romantically before. So I think that's really interesting. And and I like that that opens new opportunities for her to be closer to everyone else around her. Yeah. And then Richa, with your character as well, you know, she's now in this space where she's trying to move her life into different spaces and move forward, moving out of the home into her own place, you know, but still kind of, again, is learning so much about herself, like being very adamant, I've realized I'm not ready for marriage. And so for yeah. you, what was that like in terms of figuring out the emotional journey of your character in a way that she's moving forward, but also learning so much about what her wants and needs in the world are? You know, it's just really incredible to see how much Kamala has grown since season one because, you know, first of all, she's a character that we've never seen in American television or film before. And she's somebody who represents so many people's experiences, um, especially South Asian women, either who grew up here or who moved here. I personally related so much to her storyline and that um, in the sense that, that, you know, I also felt a lot of pressure to get married before I met my now husband and, uh, and, and, and the, the way that that cripples you and and affects how you work and affects your mental health and affects how you your relationships with people and you know in season three in season two she fought back against the misogyny and the subtle racism in her lab but in season three she's having to stand up for herself in her family and against her very intimidating uh, grandmother and you know mm -hmm. that's and that represents her fighting back against her family which to me is actually a lot scarier than fighting back against uh, people you work with who you don't necessarily care about. Yeah, absolutely. And and Porna, I really love the way that you've so beautifully been able to explore the idea of grief and loss through your character and your performance, because there's obviously moments where the script calls it out, where she's having a memory of her husband, or she's sharing a story with a family member or somebody around her. But there's also so many moments where you capture the internalized version of what that looks like for her, especially as someone who has to hold things together for everybody else around her. And so how do you kind of, in the scripts and in your performance, work to find those really subtle moments and where you think there might be small little inflections of of what carrying that in the day-to-day -day looks like for her? I mean, uh, I think everyone will agree it's it's in the writing. Uh, this 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 you 
you you you you just have to get out of the way of the writing for this particular show. It's so brilliant. Um, the the thing about the writing is that everything is deeply deeply personal. Uh, it's all the writers' lives. I, I remember that scene with Mohan where I say everyone's making fun of me and my accent and I don't belong and I want to go home. Um, and it is, you know, the the writers in the room, the South Asian women were talking about their mothers who are so accomplished and, you know, they're, 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 they're so brilliant, but how they always talk to their kids about how uh, they were so un, unseen and undervalued wherever they went. Uh, and I just, I just remember those, you know, Lang told me, she gave me a bit of background about the scene before we shot it. And it just reminded me how deeply, deeply personal um, the show is for everyone who creates it. Yeah. And and then lastly, coming over to you, Megan, um, you know, through romantic relationships for your character, she's such a such a confident character, but there's also vulnerabilities that, that come to the surface for her in that space. Um, and so how did you find what you felt like those vulnerabilities and those insecurities that would come to the surface within these two different relationship dynamics throughout the season be for her? Um, wow, that's such an intelligent question. I'm going to try to pretend like I can answer that. Um, yeah, you know, I think that what makes Anissa a real person is the fact that she isn't just inherently confident. I think that confidence has been something that she's had to actively work on um, in spite of her insecurities. Um, and that's what ultimately makes her this strong and powerful young teenager that she is, is that in spite of all the things that she goes through, she finds the strength to deal with them head on and in turn also just embody and exude this, this genuine sense of confidence. Did that answer your question? It did. Really <laughs> okay. Um, and then I wanted to come back to you, my Trey and Porna, and just talk a little bit about the mother-daughter relationship, because I think it so beautifully explores the complexity of a relationship that is so full of love, even if there are moments of, of conflict and animosity between them, because that's so natural between a teenage daughter and her mother in any space. Um, and so I was interested in how the two of you kind of worked to initially build that when you first came on board to play these characters and the way that that has developed into an emotional shorthand as scene partners for you at this point, three seasons in. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go first, Prana? Sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think like even in the uh, the first time I met Maitri was in the um, in the audition. Uh, she, I was cast first, and then I met her, and um, I learned something about casting that day, which is I, I I always think true casting is a lot like true love. It looks it sees a person's essence, um, and Maitri is this character. If she is Davy, she embodies it just inside and out. And so um, the di you know, our, our dynamic, again, with the help of the writing and but just just who the essence of these characters are just comes so easy, easily, I think, to us. It is um, we can do a very comic scene one second. We can do something that is filled with grief and and and, you know, and betrayal. And I think we can seamlessly toggle between those scenes because it's, um, you know, she's she's such a extraordinary actress. Thank you. I mean, right back at Purna, it's all about your scene partner and how much they're willing to give of themselves into that scene, right? Even if the camera isn't necessarily on you. And back to what Purna said earlier, a lot of these experiences that are written are from real experiences. And when you bring that, and I personally bring my relationship with my own mother into the you know scene as well, because my mom and I were pretty tight. Um, she'd never admit this, but I know I'm her best friend. Um, she'd rather die than admit that. But um, my relationship with my mom was never always that. Um, it's complicated. Many immigrant families have complicated relationships with their family. In general, like people have complicated relationships with their parents. And I think what's so beautiful about Never Have I Ever is that that relationship between Nalini and Davy is that it's not one way or the other. It's very like nuanced, but at the core of it, Davy knows that Nalini loves her and Nalini knows that Davy does adore her. That's the core of that relationship. And that's very known by the audience and the characters. So I think that is the essence that carries out through season to season and lets them both grow. Because what I think is really awesome is as much as we see Davy grow and mess up, 
We're also seeing Nalini grow and mess up. She's dealing with figuring out how to be a parent by herself without Mohan, who was her best friend, right? Her husband was her best friend and Nalini's learning and Davy's learning how to give Nalini some slack that she's trying, but she's also trying. They're both in the same boat together. And, that and I also parent. think like a huge common uh, theme and something you picked up, you asked in the first thing is all the characters are are now, I feel, have the courage to unbuild and rebuild slowly. And and I think season three is just a gorgeous depiction of that. Season three is absolutely such a gorgeous depiction of, of the emotional complexity of these characters and a huge reason why the show resonates so much is a testament to your incredible performances. So thank you so much to all of you for talking. Thank, about what great questions, by the way. Yeah, thank, great. Thank questions. you. Thank like you. thought thank you. behind them.